Ukrainian drones destroy 500 Group Wagner Russian entrenched frontlines Bakhmut. Footage released by Military Ukraine shows Ukrainian drones bombing tanks of and Wagner Group Russian when trying to overrun Ukrainian troop positions on the Bakhmut. On the footage show several drones of the Ukrainian troops attack dropping grenades the positions of the tanks, the artillery of the Ukrainian troops also hitting the vehicles of the Russian Wagner troops which were heading towards the front line Bakhmut. A footage shows battlefield explosion occurs as Ukrainian troop drones dropping grenades Russian Wagner invaders in trenches. The Ukrainian Armed Forces Artillery Brigade Battalion has released a video, Ukrainian troops attack Russian Wagner troops in the trenches in close combat. Drone strikes were also carried out on position Russian Wagner troops which taking cover on the area. The few surviving Wagner troops abandoned burning equipment, turning to the bushes to hide from the Ukrainian drone strike. In a grisly videotape, Ukrainian soldiers attack Russian positions to seize the last route to Bakhmut. Ukraine's 3rd Assault Brigade continues to document trench warfare in the conflict over the Bakhmut way of life. On the other hand, Ukrainian troops also destroyed Russian T-72B tanks by dropping ammunition from R-18 bomber drones. This footage shows Ukrainian drone bombers blowing up Russian tanks in the Donetsk region. In the picture it is clear that the Russian T-72B is shattered and black smoke is visible rising up big. In other footage also shows Ukrainian troops fighting with six Russian Wagner troops who are attacking the Ukrainian troops' trenches some of the Ukrainian troopers' comrades come to the rescue of their comrades. At the moment the toll of Russian military destruction in Ukraine rose to 194.970. Ukrainian defense forces destroyed an estimated 194.970 Russian troops between February 2022 and May 2023, including 500 in one last day. The general staff of the Ukrainian armed forces had this to say in a Facebook post. Meanwhile, Ukraine claims that it eliminated 64 Russian occupant fighters and left 87 more wounded while capturing many POWs on the southwestern outskirts of Bakhmut. According to the US-based think tank the Institute for the Study of War, Prigozhin claimed Russia's 72nd Motorized Rifle Brigade of the 3rd Army Corps abandoned a strategic position, resulting in 500 Wagner casualties. In a desperate attempt to seize the city earlier in the conflict, Wagner employed human wave tactics, crashing unit after unit against Ukraine's defenses. Estimates suggest as many as 40,000 Wagner fighters were killed. Despite the massive push, Ukraine's defenders have managed to cling on to parts of the city and stopped Russia from advancing any further west in the region. Prigozhin again threatened today to pull his forces out of Bakhmut due to a lack of ammunition supplies by the Russian Defense Ministry. He was threatened with treason if he did so. <laughs> A furious Prigozhin savaged Putin's forces as a fish, rotting from the head. He accused Russian commanders appointed by Putin of allowing their soldiers to die in vain. One of the Ministry of Defense's detachments ran away from one of the flanks, said a raging Prigozhin. They abandoned their positions, all of them ran away, leaving a key area of the front line exposed. What This is not the problem of soldiers, but of those who manage them and set their tasks, said billionaire Prigozhin, nicknamed Putin's chef, who set up Wagner in support of the dictator. He has repeatedly warned of the failures in Russia's high command, suggesting it can lead to losing the war to Ukraine. The loss of troops is increasing in Bakhmut, and if the decision is still being considered, soldiers leave because there is no point in dying in vain. Yesterday, he said his fighters had yet to receive ammunition promised to them by the military, but that they would continue to fight in the embattled eastern city of Bakhmut despite earlier threatening to withdraw them. 
The threat of departure marked another flare-up in Prigozhin's long-running dispute with Russia's military brass over credit and tactics in the war. On Tuesday, he contrasted the pomp of the May 9th celebrations, broadcast across Russia, with the reality on the ground. Victory Day marks the victory of our grandfathers. We did not deserve a single bit of this victory. The counteroffensive will be on the ground, not on television, Prigozhin warned, adding that the Russian state is unable to defend the country. Prigozhin has become known for such inflammatory, headline-grabbing statements, particularly at key moments when attention is focused elsewhere, but issuing them on Victory Day was remarkably bold. Footage of the retreat came after Putin hosted Russia's annual May 9 Victory Day parade to mark the 78th anniversary of the Soviet Union's defeat of Nazi Germany. Today civilization is once again at a decisive turning point, Putin said at the annual commemorations, a real war has been unleashed against our motherland. The Russian leader has repeatedly sought to paint his invasion of Ukraine as necessary to defend against a Western threat. Kyiv and its Western allies say they pose no such threat and that Moscow's war is meant to deter Western influence in a country that Russia considers part of its sphere of influence. Yesterday's parade was weak. There are no tanks, said Yelena Orlova, watching the vehicles rumble down Moscow's Novi Arbat Avenue after leaving Red Square. We're upset, but that's all right. It will be better in the future. The Kremlin's forces deployed in Ukraine are defending a front line stretching more than 600 miles, presumably thinning the ranks of troops available for such displays. Украине, сука!